Hey everyone and welcome back to this class, Advanced Computer Vision. In this lecture, we are going to look at the code to draw a class activation map. The relevant file for this example is classactivationmaps.py. So at the top we have all our imports. So as discussed, we'll be using ResNet, and along with that, we need its version of preprocess inputs. We also have a useful function called decode predictions, where we can pass in the model's predictions, and this will return a sorted list of class names along with associated scores. This is useful since without this, we wouldn't actually know what any of the classes are. So now we can check if the class prediction is correct as well. Next, we're going to load in some image files. For this example, I chose the Caltech 101 and 256 datasets. But of course, we know that the ResNet was trained on ImageNet, so you could theoretically grab images from there or many other places, since ImageNet is pretty diverse. Next, something I always like to do is a basic sanity check, just to plot one image from the dataset. You don't need to do this, but I like to. Next, we're going to instantiate a ResNet model. In this course, we've typically been working with headless ResNets, but for this example, we already have a pre-built classifier, so we're going to use the entire thing. Something else you can try is to use transfer learning to train your own model on your own classes and do the same exercise to see which parts of the image your model focuses on. Also, if you notice, we're going to make sure that the ResNet has constant size, 224 by 224. This is required in order for this example to work. After that, we're going to print out a ResNet summary, which we've already looked at in the theory lecture, so that you can see the size of each layer and what the layers are and what they are called. Next, we're going to grab the final activation layer, activation 49, which is the final layer where the image size is 7x7. We're going to need these to build a new model object so that we can get the outputs from this layer. Next, we're also going to need the weights from the final dense layer, so we're going to grab FC1000 and call the getWeights function. Next, we're going to enter an infinite loop, where we'll randomly pick an image and draw its class activation map. So the first thing we need to do here is pick a random image and then load it using Keras's load image function. This is also going to let us specify its size, which as we discussed has to be 224 by 224. Next, we need to call preprocess input on this image so that it's the right format for ResNet. Next, we're going to grab the feature maps from our submodel, which we've just called model. So we call model.predict and grab the zeroth output. Remember that we need to do this because the batch size is always the first dimension. So out of this, we get back an array of size 7 by 7 by 2048. Next, we'll need to grab the predicted class. So to do this, we call resnet.predict. This is going to give us the class probabilities. From this, we can use our decode predictions function to get the top n class names and their scores. Next, I'm going to get the actual class name as a string, so that's the first element of class names, which gives me a tuple, and then the second element of that tuple. Next, I want the index of the class label in order to grab the correct weights, so I want to call argmax on these probabilities. I assign that to a variable called pred. Next, in order to get the relevant weights, I'm going to index w, by the pred column. This is going to give me back 2048 weights, and then I'm going to dot this with the feature maps I found before, which gives me my class activation map. So currently the cam variable is a 7x7 seven seven image. So next I'm going to call the scipy zoom function in order to upsample the image. So 7 times 32 is 224, 
So that's why I'm scaling the cam variable by a factor of 32. Now at this point, the class activation map and the image are both the same size, so I can make my plot. What I want to do is plot both the original image by itself and the original image overlaid by the class activation map. So that's why I have subplot 121 and subplot 122. This is going to make the images appear beside each other. We also have to set the alpha value on the overlaid images so that there's some transparency and you'll be able to see both images. Finally, note that at the bottom here, I also have a function called slow version that does the calculation for the class activation map. So this function explicitly does the weighted sum of each feature map with its corresponding weight. So you can try this out and use this if you don't trust my dot product, and you'll see that they both produce the same result. Now let's run this and see what we get. All right, so here's just a random image. All right, so this prediction is definitely not correct. Let's continue. All right, I'm not sure what this is, but it definitely finds the face of this animal. Maybe you can Google this d-hole and confirm that that's correct. But it does, looking at the rest of these, confirm that it's some kind of animal. All right, what is this? Okay, porcupine, and it finds, I guess, the, uh, the spikes of the porcupine. Let's continue. That's interesting. So this is a face, but for the bow tie class, it manages to identify the bow tie. All right, table lamp. So it identifies the bottom of the lamp. I don't know what that is. Probably some kind of insect name. Interesting. So it says peer and it notices the water. Although it does look at the bridge as well. Oh, and if you notice, the other classes do recognize that there's a bridge. So if you plotted the class activation map for these other classes, you might see the bridge highlighted more. Solar dish, I'm not sure. Limpkin. Again, I don't know what that is. Some of these are pretty exotic. Interesting. Goose, that's pretty close. And it notices the beak, the face of the goose which I would say is the most prominent part of this picture. All right, so we can see that some of the predictions are definitely wrong. This is to be expected since ResNet has to classify 1,000 classes. But if we were to just do, say, 10 classes, this would be a much easier problem. So this is another reason why it might be a good idea to test this out by training on your own smaller data set.